Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where we have a couple of projects in progress here. We currently have the Calaturus Rescue Craft working to orbit the moon. It will of course need 11 days and we've got the France Comsat Mark 1 over here. This is not in fact the one we want to do because we actually reverted back with the previous launch because I was dumb and we didn't technically revert it because I deducted the cost. It was just a time save, but I have added in the mystery goo and I believe I showed this previously that I have also added in not just the mystery goo, but I added a KER in on here as well. Excellent. So this should be more than capable of getting where we need it to go. And so we will head on out. And this should be in plenty of time for that rescue mission. That'll be no worries whatsoever. So let's get this underway, shall we? Excellent. SAS on, throttle up, double check the staging. All looks good. Okay, let's go. One thing I probably should have done is moved these tanks to this side, just so that I'm not, you know, upset about it, but I, I don't think there's an issue here. Realistically, the rocket performed excellently last episode, so I'm completely okay with it. I mean, that wouldn't change the rocket performance, right? That just would change the way that we're looking at it a little bit. So let's go ahead and start making our way over on the 90 degree marker. We were a little bit off of that, but that's okay. We'll just sit somewhere around here. We can always change our inclination later. It's not like this thing's going to have a shortage of Delta V or anything. Of course, we can't lock to the prograde node, so we're going to have to do this the old fashioned way, but that's fine. With a KER on here, that'll make things much, much easier. And we'll just position. We are having a little bit of resistance from the air here. That's fine. We'll just sit here for a moment. I want to move up on the heading a little though. Yeah, it, we're definitely wanting to drag down a little bit. But that's fine. Off go our boosters. And let's just see about fixing our trajectory at this point. 33,000 apoapsis, that's fine. I'll just head over to the prograde marker. Yeah, you can see here we're definitely drifting a little bit in our roll. There's no doubt about that, but that's just because of our aerodynamics. I'm not too concerned about it. We'll be able to get that out of there, no problem. Or more specifically, we can just play around it. Excellent. So we're doing reasonably well here in terms of our ascent. And I think one of the other reasons that we're having a little bit of control authority issues here is because I believe we don't have an ASAS module, which is something we could add, but I don't really think is necessary. We'll see once we get into space, which by the way, we're currently at an apoapsis height of about 60 kilometers. We're currently pushing over towards the horizon, of course, and we're completely fine to do so. We're getting ourselves a good amount of speed. We are going to have to dip into this stage a little bit to get into orbit, but that's fine. We have so much Delta V in this. I'm really deeply unconcerned about that. We are high enough now to ditch our fairing, and so we shall. Excellent. Our SAS is not particularly good. And yeah, I'm, I'm definitely seeing a lack of ASAS. That's something I might add to a later model. But overall, I'm reasonably content with this. So we will just hold up here and we'll save that extra 216 meters per second to do some circularization. Something along the lines of this should be reasonable. Something like that. Yeah, that's good. So this is going to be node in T minus two minutes. You can see here we have barely any reaction wheels. It's a burn time of 52 seconds, so we want to do this at T minus 26 seconds. And that's fine. We'll just get into position for it. 
And then rather than trying to anticipate when this is going to be, we definitely need an ASAS for this situ this situation here. It will get better. But rather than trying to anticipate when to stop this turn, instead we'll just freeze physics like so. It's a little cheesy, but it works. So we will now advance until T minus 26 seconds here. So right about now. Excellent. And we'll just try to hold this attitude as best as possible. Our unmanned situation is not necessarily the best, but now that we've ditched that first stage, this should be far more controllable. Yeah, excellent. Let's go ahead and extend our... Flight Engineer, you're always over something. Let's go ahead and extend our antenna for our high-gain antenna. Excellent. And we will be entering orbit momentarily. What's our our inclination here about 0.3 degrees good enough honestly more than good enough like we have so much delta v in this thing though it's insane there we go entering orbital mode and close enough excellent and technically we can see this information in here now so that's a thing <laughs> that i always forget about but we're going to head off to the moon and we're going to probably a little later than this is my guess yeah a little later that's fine so which direction do we need to be going here this way okay so we're going prograde for that that's completely fine let's go ahead and adjust our periapsis here to be somewhere around here and we're gonna have to change our inclination too so that's something that we should probably do as far out as possible I mean, it's not like we're short on TV. Let's just do it here. <laughs> It'll be fine. We're not short on TV. Okay, so there we go. That is, of course, going to be in T minus 28 minutes. And let's go ahead and start our turn here. It's going to be a whole lot better once we burn out some of this fuel. We're by no means going to burn all of it, though. Okay, we'll go ahead and freeze physics there. And then we will warp to next maneuver. Excellent. This is a 1 minute 18 second burn. So we're going to want to burn this at T minus 39 seconds. Excellent. And we should have plenty of battery charge. So no concerns there. We drifted off of the node a little bit. That is completely fine. We'll adjust that. There we go, and warp towards 1 minute 39. We're still going to be a little bit off the node here, so we'll readjust probably at around 1 minute 50 or so. Yeah, that's, that's actually fine. No worries there. And we'll burn now. The SAS module not doing fantastic. But that is expected at this technology level with an unmanned. Wonderful. So off to the moon we go. Hop into the map mode here and you can see our apoapsis steadily increasing. Great. About 45 seconds left in this burn and that's not a worry. We've got so much DV here. Like seriously, look at this. We've got 5,000 DV left in this. This craft... I don't know about the range on this antenna, but this craft could probably go to E for Duna. It's a little overbuilt. There's no doubt about that. Now, I would definitely, if we're doing that, I would want to have better, uh, better node locking than we have here. And a longer range antenna would be nice as well. But for now, this will do. This will get us a commsat in orbit over the moon which will be handy, and we might want to get one over Minmus as well, even though Minmus technically doesn't exist for Ethiopia. I'm probably going to call that good enough. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, so at this periapsis, we will go ahead and do a retrograde burn, and that will pull us into about right here or so. 
a circularized orbit. That will be fine. And then we will just line up our orbits and figure out how we need to set up the uh, how we need to set up the inclination change. For now, we'll just go ahead and warp our way to here. Hello, Moon. We're about to do a whole lot of things in your orbit, Moon. And I imagine most of them you're going to be okay with. You're not going to be okay with our end game, though, I suspect. We have to build a mining station there. We don't have a mystery goo observation from in space high. Right, we don't. Because it's all in the... Uh, it's all in the transport... Or it's, it's all in the... Uh, Grabber. That's not the term. <laughs> it's in the storage, for the experiment storage unit in the stranded ship. And we're going to be transferring as much as we can. We're not going to be able to transfer all of it, though. And that's okay. We don't need to transfer all of it. We will be back for that science. So we're just going to head on over here until we get to the node. The maneuver node is over here, of course. And I suppose we could transmit this science. That is something we could do. We could grab this and transmit what we can. There we go. Unit's inoperable, but it's not like we care. Okay, so let's go ahead and warp now to our maneuver. This is going to be an 18 second burn, so we want to burn this at T minus nine seconds. And we'll just warp forward a little bit more here until we get about to that point. Okay. So right about now. Excellent. Our thrust to weight is definitely coming up. There's no doubt about that. Just going to adjust our node here, or rather adjust our heading a little bit to hit the node a bit more. And this is looking fine. Close enough. Okay, now for our inclination. We know where the ascending node is, so that's all well and good. I just want to adjust our camera here a little bit. There we go. We'll add a maneuver here, and it needs to be anti-normal. Sure. And we'll just line it up to be about like that. That should be close enough for our inclination. 33.9 meters per second. Node in 34 minutes, a two-second burn. Not bad on the inclination change. Not bad at all. So let's just make our way over to anti-normal. Not quite as close as I was hoping to get there. There we go, that'll do. And we will then warp to that maneuver. Excellent. And this is probably going to take us a little longer than two seconds, to be to be completely honest. Because I'm going to burn this at a lower velocity. But that's okay. A lower thrust level, I guess I should say. Okay, so this is going to be a two second burn. I'm going to start the burn at like five seconds, and we're going to try to elongate it a bit. Because I can't exactly lock anti-normal here right now. So we'll do something along the lines of this. Okay. Just chasing that note a bit. Is that close enough? That's probably close enough. Oh yeah, that's close enough. I just want to check up here for the... Here we go. Inclination 6.5 degrees. Our current inclination is 6.47. So technically we should try to increase this a little bit. Well, it rounds to 6.48. I kind of truncated that instead of rounding it. I overshot. It's good enough. <laughs> okay, so at this periapsis, we're going to drop down our apoapsis a little bit, but we're actually going to need to change our timing on this to be more like here. Now, that's probably close enough for contract work. 
Yeah, that should be close enough there. Excellent, so we will position for that. Of course, once again, we have a bit of a lack of SAS on this. It's okay, we can get it done, but we probably want to put an ASAS on this, or if we want to be a little more realistic, RCS. We're definitely going to want RCS for docking. There's no doubt about that one. Okay, so we are in position now for this burn, and we will go ahead and warp to that maneuver. This is only a half second burn, so we're going to have to be really gentle on this. So let's just get into position here. We are... Mm, we're going to be occluded here, aren't we? Are we going to be able to make this burn? Maybe just. Technically, we're not able to make this burn, I don't think. Can we throttle up? We might be able to. Let's warp forward a little bit more. The issue here, of course, is that we're, our line of sight to Kerbin is occluded. So we can't actually get a message to our probe. But we may be able to throttle up here. Just not really do anything else. We are control locked. Nope, we can't throttle up. Oh, we can. But we have to do it in that manner. We can only max the throttle. We can't th throttle it up a little bit. But this is close enough. Yeah, we can't delete the maneuver node because we're control locked. But what we can do is we can warp over to... Not to next maneuver. But rather, we can just move on up. Warp like this. We are no longer control locked. There we go. This is close enough. I did manage to barely pull it off, mostly through sheer luck. So we're going to get our periapsis to about here. I'm going to just adjust when we do that burn a little bit. And there we go. That is our desired orbit. So we'll go ahead and warp to that maneuver as well. And I probably should have turned beforehand, considering that we're kind of slow on our turning. But that's okay. We'll just go over to here. This is a very, very minute burn again, but we have actually control this time, so we will be completely okay. We'll just position the to the retrograde node. Close enough. There we go. And we'll just warp forward a little bit here until we are a little bit closer. This is probably good enough. So I'm just going to do a very minor burn here. And then we'll have to hold stability for 10 seconds, but that is close enough right there. So now we hold stability. And the contract is done. Fantastic. That's a lot of cash. That's a whole lot of cash. Okay, let's head on back to the Space Center. Once we arrive here, we will immediately see we've got a lot of cash. And we've also got a rescue operation to pull off. So, I mean, here's the thing, right? We are currently working on... This one. Sansor can't actually EVA, which I think is a kind of bad limitation of the game like tourists can't eva i can understand tourists not being able to perform scientific experiments and things like that but in the context of a rescue mission i feel like they should be able to eva and in all honesty it was always probable <laughs> that they would get rescued here so actually let's hop over to the free india mark six and i want to show you what i'm talking about here so this is the Free India Mark VI. I burned it the wrong way, and there's no fuel left here. It was entirely my fault. We can rescue Jebediah. We can rescue Bob. We cannot rescue Sanzor, because tourists may not disembark. But what if the tourist wants to go for a spacewalk? It seems like that's a service we should offer. So what I'm actually going to do is we're going to pretend that we could EVA him and rescue him. If we had docking ports on this, we could dock up and do it that way, and I would. But we don't have docking ports. That's not a technology that we have yet. So we're going to hop back to the Space Center here, and we're going to do the rescue. And we're going to have to do quite a lot of ferrying, because we have a lot of a lot of experiments. Some of those we're not going to be able to bring. 
We can only bring some of the experiments because I removed the experiment storage unit on the Kalachuris Mark 1. And the Kalachuris Mark 1 is actually... I'm leaning towards having this be our tourist craft. Because this is a pretty robust craft. It can carry up to four tourists and a pilot. And it's got pretty good DV. So there's that. At any rate, we need to get this rendezvous. We've got 868 meters per second with which to do this. And we can just go ahead and warp around this a few times because we know that we need to warp for a few days. So that's okay. We'll just keep on doing warp here for now just so that I don't accidentally overshoot. Each of these is about two days. And that is completely okay. So we have about three days left. And we will warp to here. This is our final orbit before... Th these are technically, I believe, called a phasing orbit. So that's our final phasing orbit there. And then I believe this is a retrograde burn. Yeah, this is a retrograde burn. Now, we do have our descending node that we need to worry about. We're on a slightly different inclination, but I'm not actually going to be too concerned about that. We're going to go ahead and warp to this maneuver. This is a very tiny burn. This is a very tiny burn. 6.6 .6 meters per second. So let's just go ahead and warp forward a little bit here. To something around... 10 seconds away. Excellent. And we don't have to get this exact number here. It's fine. But we're just going to burn this right on down to be that. Okay. So we can now see that our intersect is going to be in about T minus 5 hours, 10 minutes, and 23 seconds. And our relative speed is going to be only 31.4 meters per second. That is really not bad. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into target mode, and we're going to go onto target retrograde. So that's great. And then we're going to advance to around here. Are we close enough to see the target yet? Not yet, but we will be pretty soon. So you can see our target velocity is currently changing. And you can see that we are rendezvousing. I'm going to go ahead and warp to here, though, and bring us in a little bit closer. We are only... actually can't see it from here. We are only about 50 kilometers away right now. In fact, we can see right here. That's the Free India Mark VI. We're only about 25 kilometers away. What is our closest separation? 2.2 kilometers. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to warp forward here a little bit, and we're going to start our velocity match probably somewhere around three kilometers. We don't have to... We don't have to be super close for this. Seven, six, five... Just dropping down our speed a bit. Four... Okay, that's three kilometers there. So we're going to go ahead and change our relative velocity here. Now, notice I'm not burning this very hard at all. There's a reason for that. I want us to get a little bit closer here. I'm going to turn that up maybe a little bit. Yeah, this is close enough, though. Okay. Slow it down a bit, and... We are now perfectly stationary in relation to the Free India Mark VI in a perfectly synchronous orbit, and we are about two kilometers away. Now we're still drifting a little bit closer, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and point to target. Now, this is something that Valentina doesn't know how to do. Luckily, I do. This is the target marker right here, and we're going to go ahead and burn towards the target a little bit here. Let's move up to around 10 meters per second. I, actually, 10 is maybe a little much. Let's just sit at around 5 meters per second. This'll be fine. And then we'll hop over into retrograde. 
And you can see here that our intersect has now moved to over here, and we will only be 0.1 kilometers apart at that point. So that is great. We're going to go ahead and time warp until we are a little bit closer here. 1.8765432. Perfect. Pretty soon, we're going to want to arrest our momentum again and match momentums or match velocities again. We're going to be about 100 meters apart at our closest approach, apparently. So that's fine. We will just go ahead and get a little closer here. And then we will kill this velocity right about now. I'm going to do it, but not very quickly. Right like that. Okay. And with that, it is time to put a cut in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we're going to rescue these guys and come on home. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. And I will see you all next time.